Hi everyone, this is Forrest for Faulty Lid, and today we're going to look at a Zarya VOD review. This player is Platinum Skill Rank, and we're playing at a game that's around 2876 SR. Uh, he has some questions on maintaining charge, especially on attack, and using his bubbles to save teammates. He also asks about his bad habit of jumping a lot, which he knows he has. And he asks about holding high ground to Zarya and what he could be doing. Well, right off the bat, let's answer that high ground question. Because he almost answers it for himself right at the start. If you see, he lobs this grenade right into this choke right here. And that's really what I do as Zarya when I'm holding high ground. When I'm on high ground, I focus on using my team bubbles to support anyone not on the high ground. So say I have a Genji or a Pharah that's going to like fly in or jump in, respectively. I'll be using my bubbles on them to help them survive. Now in the case of everyone on the high ground, I first check to see if there are divers on the enemy team. If they have a Winston, Pharah, Genji, etc., I'll be saving my bubbles for when my team bubbles for when they come attack us. Now, in the case of everyone is on the high ground and they are all pushing behind their Reinhardt shield, you don't have to worry about divers. You can use your team bubble on your Reinhardt when he fire strikes, so you can prevent him from being hooked when his shield is down. As for building charge, you want to be using your personal bubble to build charge, and that's just a general rule I have all the time especially on high ground, because if you just use your personal bubble to peek out a second, get some charge, come back behind your Reinhardt shield, you're with your healers, you're in a safe spot, you don't really need the protection of your personal shield in that moment, so you can use it to build charge relatively safely. So the goal of what I'm actually doing and what I'm doing for damage is, like I said, this. I'm lobbing grenades into the back line of the enemy team. Now, usually, there'll be a Reinhardt shield here, it'll come around the corner, and it'll look something like this. What that actually does for Zarya is it opens up this back area to exposed enemies that you can lob grenades into. Anas will stand back here, soldiers will stand back in this area, and you just want to be firing away at them, chunking damage into them, making their life difficult. Ideally, we have enough charge and we have enough accuracy that we can get a pick onto something, but just making their life generally difficult is decent value at this time. So that's pretty much how I'd handle the high ground. Just try to spam in right clicks, build up some charge, and poking at the Reinhardt shields when all else fails. So we drop down to this low ground here, and I don't love being down here. And honestly, I think his Reinhardt should have just dropped down and got in front of him and just played this straight forward at this point because their soldiers 76 is like right over here. So really all the Reinhardt is protecting up on the high ground is the healers. And I just don't think he's providing enough value for being up there. But, you know, that's the hand we're dealt. We don't, we're not playing Reinhardt. We're playing Zarya right now. We can't control that other player. I'm just going to analyze this from the point of basically, like, we have no Reinhardt right now. And what would I do at that point? So that bubble was actually pretty decent. Uh... You know, I think I might have considered letting him get hooked. He takes a shot, he throws his hook, and our bubble actually stops our Roadhog from getting hooked here. Now our Roadhog is at full health. If we had let him get hooked and then bubbled him, we're probably getting 40 charge off of it and then putting 300 damage onto their Roadhog. That probably gets us a pick on that Roadhog, but it is kind of risky, so pre-bubbling him isn't the worst. It's just, I don't know if I pre-bubble anyone who's not squishy. It really comes down to 
if we didn't pre-bubble Roadhog, would he be so out of position by being hooked that he would die? And I just don't think that's the case in this scenario. So I think I might let him get get hooked. I just want to point out right here that this is a great use of personal bubble. Our Roadhog hooks their Roadhog. And he sees that his bubble is still on cooldown. And that's really good that he recognizes that he needs to do something about this. Because our Roadhog hooked first. And we don't want our Roadhog to get picked by their Roadhog right now. So what he smartly does is pops his own bubble and steps in front of our Roadhog. So our Roadhog is going to do the damage onto their Roadhog. But we're actually just going to tank the shot for our Roadhog and we're going to get 40 charge and prevent 300 damage being put onto our teammates. So that's a great move by him. And we end up killing the Roadhog because of it. That's great. Now, this is a general habit that I've seen this player have is they almost play Zarya like her beam is a shotgun. Zarya's beam has a 15 meter range on it and at every point in that 15 meters it does the exact same damage so there's no damage drop off on it shooting heroes like genji is made very difficult with zarya when you creep in like this player has a tendency to do what you really want to be doing against all your heroes that you're fighting against Azaria with the beam is keeping that 15 meter distance because it will help your tracking. You don't really notice it as much when you're fighting a Roadhog or a Winston or a Reinhardt because their hitboxes are so big that when you get up close on them, you can still put on damage consistently anyway. But it becomes very noticeable when you're fighting Genjis or even a Mercy because when you're really close to them, their small hitboxes are going to be moving wildly all over the place. So when we're trying to track the Genji and he's like this close to us, that's like five, eight meters or so. It's not very far. You can see that this player really has trouble keeping his cursor on the Genji. If he managed to get distance backed up a little bit, the motions that he would need to make are much smaller. And that makes it a lot easier to track targets that zip around like Genji. A great moment to be tracking them, especially, it makes it a lot easier, is look for the moments where he's falling down out of the sky. He's already used both jumps and he's on his down path because that'll be very predictable. And you can really get good at predicting that path if you look for it often enough. Again, let's back up a little bit. Our Roadhog hooks this soldier, and we push in on this soldier. It's, again, it's almost like this player is playing D.Va, and he wants to get in to like, get shotgun damage onto someone. Keep that distance, keep our, our max beam distance as much as possible, and that'll make it a lot easier for us to hit him. Like, this distance that we are to this Ana right now is pretty much beam distance. Like we can we can track a target like that relatively easily. When we get up close, it's a lot harder. So this was a great uh, bubble use right here as well. Our Roadhog hooks their Roadhog, and we know that as a Zari player, our Roadhog hooked first, and he's going to need our help in order to win this fight, especially because their Roadhog is being pocketed by Mercy, as we can see on this beam right here. So we throw our bubble onto this Roadhog, and we get a lot of charge off of it, and we help out his job. Now, something I'll actually say over comms to my Roadhog teammates is that I don't want them to be afraid to hook first. I say to them, if we're at the start of an engagement, and you know there's pretty much no reason why I wouldn't have my bubble up, go ahead and hook first. Don't be afraid to hook first, because Roadhogs really don't want to hook first, because it'll usually get them killed. But hook first, because I will protect you, and we'll end up getting this kill. 
You did a great job bubbling your Roadhog here, but I would go even further as to tell your Roadhog, hey, don't be afraid. Hook first. I will be there to protect you. Yeah, so we want to be lobbing in bubble, uh, grenades here onto the supports like we just were. So right now, we're kind of frantic and all over the place. What we really want to be doing as Zarya is... Zarya is a tank, but she's not necessarily a frontliner. She's like, I, I say like she exists in the middle of the team. So I want to be somewhere over in this area behind this Roadhog. But right now, you can't really protect your teammates because you can't see them. And... You really want to be watching the whole battlefield at once. And a lot of times I see in this footage that he doesn't have views or doesn't check around and keep a watch on everything. When you're playing Zarya, you almost want to be playing like you're a healer. You have a, you want to have that whole view of the battlefield. Otherwise, you're not going to know where you're really needed. I think part of the reason he has this problem is because he's so frantic in his jumping around and going everywhere. And because he wants to use Zarya's beam like a shotgun and dive in at everything. So if you just hung back, not only would you have an easier time aiming, you'd have a better idea of when to use your bubbles to save teammates because you'll just be actually be able to see those teammates. And you'll see the whole battle as a complete image. Instead of this tunnel vision to I'm with Roadhog and everyone else is doing who knows what because I can't see it. Right here is kind of where I'd like to see you set up because, okay, now I can see my Pharah, now I can see my Roadhog. I still can't see any of the supports up here, which is kind of unfortunate because we do want to be protecting them. And I can't see my Reinhardt and I really haven't seen him all game and I can't see, uh, I guess my soldier switched to Pharah. So the point is... You need to be back a little bit, otherwise you don't have the information to properly use bubbles. Wow, like, this is almost hard to review at this point, and I don't mean to hate on the Zarya player at all, because this is actually what my Zarya probably looked like when I was learning her. I, too, had the problem of diving in at things and treating Zarya's beam like it was a shotgun. But if we look at this... He gets so... He's diving into this Soldier 76. Now we have to make these big movements to track and we're gonna have to swing our cursor around when if we were just a little bit back imagine we were shooting this Ana and this Ana was a threat at the time th th like when she moves a step to the right we just go eh cursor goes like that when he moves a couple steps to the right we go whoosh and that's a much harder thing to do it's a much harder thing to track we want to keep the tracking distances really small I honestly am having trouble keeping up with the way the camera is flying around. And he comments is at the end of this round, like, whoa, I'm sweating. That's because you're going nuts and you're going way too ham right now. Hang back a little bit. Be a little bit more relaxed. You don't need to be jumping all over the place. Just try to replace that jumping habit with like 80, 80 spamming. So... This Zarya player does a great job maintaining charge and does a pretty good job with his bubbles on defense. But on offense, he kind of struggles a little bit more. I also wouldn't bubble this Roadhog before he's hooked. I usually save my bubble for when the Roadhog has actually pulled something in and hooked it, rather than preemptively bubbling. It's hard to say if... It wouldn't have mattered anyways because, you know, you're still blocking damage and, and all that. But um, it may have saved him 
Because by the by the time this comes, by the time he hooks the Roadhog, the Roadhog gets a shot on him and then actually hooks him again and kills him. But one thing I want to say is I don't really think you should be coming up with this Roadhog at all like this. I think you need to be down here with the core of your team. Again, you're tunneling in with a tank that you're going to protect and... You really need to be at the core of the team, seeing the whole battlefield. If you were behind your Reinhardt shields, you can still bubble this Roadhog right here. You'd still have a decent enough view of him to be able to do it. Right now, you're in a flanking position that like a Soldier 76 or a McCree would take. That's not where Zarya wants to be. Zarya should be behind the Reinhardt shield. And it actually gets you killed because there was a Reaper waiting for whoever was coming through this tunnel. So that's a case of bubbling too early right there. Now, you said you struggle to get charge on attack. Well, actually, bubbling a Reinhardt kind of during the poke session of a battle is a great way to get charge on attack. But it is not something you want to do when there's an enemy Roadhog on the other team because look at this. Now your Reinhardt drops his shields, opens himself up for this hook, and you don't have a bubble for him. So he is toast. He is going to die from that. The way I look at it is Roadhogs on the enemy team are going to hook eventually. Just wait for that. A lot of times, if you wait for that hook, you can bubble your teammate, get 40 charge, go at that Roadhog with your 40 charge, bubble again, get more charge when he shoots at you, and now he's probably in like critical health, and you just start snowballing from there. So wait for that hook. So for this, th there's just really no reason to poke, no reason to peek. Your Reinhardt's dead. Just wait for him to respawn. Now you're just you're basically just feeding ultimate charge to the enemy team. There's no reason to even be fighting right now. Your team doesn't have their full team. I'm not sure. Oh, you don't have a Reinhardt anymore. That's that. That would. That's what's going on. Okay, so you're playing this a little bit better. You want to use the cart as your Reinhardt at this point. This is pretty risky to dive in, and you get punished for it. You can keep your distance. Be patient. Let your let your DPS do some work. Let your hog get hooks. And, and look at this. Your Ana almost gets killed because you're diving in all the time. Like you're diving in, you're diving in, and then you're like, whoa, where did this Roadhog come from? He's hooking my Ana. Well, you probably would have had a better idea of that situation happening if you stood back with your team and not pushing forward so aggressively all the time. Let's highlight this. From what I've seen in this footage, you kind of struggle to track these smaller targets. But look at this. Look at the distance you have between you and Ana here. And you put some consistent beam damage on her as she moves around this corner. And the reason you're doing that is because you're at a proper distance for Zarya. You can actually track heroes that are this small that have this hitbox because they're way easier to track when you have that distance between you. That's some of the most consistent damage I've seen you put onto a squishy in this entire bot. But then again, when you close that distance, you make it harder for yourself, you start right clicking and you start losing her and someone else just finishes her off. If you just maintain that distance, you would have finished her off and it would have been no problem. Also, you dive in at that Reaper doing the same thing. That Reaper is gonna hurt you if you get that close to him. 
doesn't you don't get punished for it there, but you're just making it easier for him to do damage and you're making it harder for yourself to do damage. So what I'd say to you as a player is start learning to hang back with Zarya. Start learning to see the whole battlefield. You've got pretty good reflexes with your shields and you've pretty much used your shields in the correct way. The problems that you're going to have are because you're so up close and you want to be diving onto things, so you're producing less damage, putting yourself in more danger, and you're not giving yourself a proper view of the battlefield to actually use that knowledge of bubbles that I think you actually have. Because you, you, know, you bubble your Roadhog when he hooks, you bubble people when they're purple, those are smart things. But you can't be applying that knowledge if you can't actually see the whole battlefield. So you want to be hanging back, watching your supports much more than you do in any of this gameplay, and just generally being more of a manager of the battlefield rather than trying to dive in and be this frontline shotgun player that Zarya really isn't. I think if you could take a step back and see the whole battlefield, you're actually going to be a way better Zarya player because you're pretty decent at getting charged you're pretty decent at getting bubbles now just make all of that easier for yourself make all, all of that damage easier and that tracking easier for yourself by being in the right spot okay that's gonna do it for this vod if you'd like to get your own vod reviewed please send it to faultylid at gmail.com upload it to youtube and send me the link in an email also, tell me what specific aspect of the gameplay you'd like me to focus on. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. This has been Forrest for Faulty Lid, and I'll see you next time.